You know, we have a lot of international students. We, lot, we have a lot of first-generation college students. We have a lot of non-traditional age students. We have a lot of students who have disrupted their education and come back. Um, we, and, and social annotation has empowered these students in a variety of ways uh, that allows their voice to be heard um, inside of the classroom, maybe through this kind of sideways path. And not only have students commented that uh, by annotating and rehearsing and, and then seeing their peers re replying and responding to their ideas, not only does it bolster their confidence to um, you know, speak in, in this class, but it has had a ripple effect in their other classes as well. Um, and they frequently say, you know, we wish we were able to use hypothesis mm -hmm. in our other courses. Um, and, you know, my pedagogy aligns really strongly with, with uh, both Heather and Jacqueline's in that uh, this decentering um, of the text of the instructor, um, you know, is, is a powerful tool. And uh, one of the things that I think is really kind of interesting, and again, I would love to study it, but I don't, I don't have the background to do that, is I think that something really powerful happens when a student doesn't necessarily hear their voice in class, but, but sees their ideas in print alongside the text of these published authors, if, if that's what you're annotating. Um, and it creates a kind of leveling or decentering that allows students to be, um, and I think I can't remember Heather, if it was you or Jacqueline who said this, but sort of on the same journey, just maybe a little bit, you know, just got started, but but on the same journey as Marx or on the same journey <laughs> as K. Jemison or, you know, on the same journey. And, um, you know, that it liberates us from this kind of toxic belief that in order, and maybe I just reproduced that by saying, you know, in, in order to have anything to say, you have to already know, you know? Mm. Um, and, and then that really does diminish what's possible in terms of, of um, creative problem solving, contributing to the you know, world of ideas, uh, working on a very specific project, that kind of thing. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is that, you know, in, in, in the, courses, the courses that I teach, a lot of collaboration happens, especially from the midpoint toward the end of the semester. And, and so uh, practicing these kinds of collaborations in a way that is a little bit less threatening, uh, where students have the time to think on their own, to select, you know, what in the text compels them, uh, or to ask for, for help or pose a question to another um, individual in class or to me, uh, does give them that low stakes uh, rehearsing of, of skills that are so important, you know, as they move out of the college environment and work with folks, you know, in a collaborative nature. So it's, um, you know, powerful in that way as well.